So um, I handle kind of the backbone of IT stuff. The things that if they work, you never know I exist. That's kind of the way we like to have it. So uh, Don is talking about telecommunications. Dan's going to talk to you about your website, your internet presence, your social media and everything. I represent your infrastructure. Infrastructure can be broken down into three basic ways. You have your foundation, which is kind of like your skeleton system. You have your switches, you've got your workstations, you have your servers, you have your cable modem, you have your routers. These are bare minimum any business needs. If you're in the cloud, you're not in the cloud, you still need this basic. Next is your environment. This is when we're talking about what's loaded on your computers. Do you have Microsoft Office? Do you use some sort of uh, ERP or an electrical, uh, electronic medical record software? Or do you use a customer relationship management system or something? And then finally, we're talking again about the cloud. The cloud, you will see more and more in your business, and the opportunities are getting better every day of every week. But at the same time, you still need some basic foundations at your location, and that's not going to change in the foreseeable future. So, telecommunications. You have your internet in. You know, this is your cable modem at your house, this is your BIOS, whatever. This connects to your router that hits your switch, hits your servers, then your workstations. Again, router switches and at least some sort of server, whether it's a traditional server, a backup device, or just a workstation that shares a printer, most offices will continue to have some level of a server. Finally, we have the cloud. The cloud is great for off-site backup. You don't want to pay 500 bucks a copy for Microsoft um, you know, Office Suite. Cloud um, do off-site computing. You can pay a monthly charge. It's kind of like renting versus buying. You can also do your website offline, which makes the most sense by far. Email is also usually a good option to have off-site, or at least some sort of redundant internet on-site if you're going to your own email. And again, social media, because we all need business to come to the door. So, back to environment. Your basic environment is your computer operating system. This is how your computer knows to work. You have Windows, you have Linux, you use Ubuntu, if you have Android tablets, Android is a form of Linux, and then Macintosh, which is still a form of Linux in so many words, but you know, we'll call it its own operating system uh, you know, for argument's sake. After that, what do you run on top of your operating system? These are all the programs when you turn on your computer. All you have is Microsoft Windows, it doesn't do a whole lot. You can get to the internet, if you have internet connectivity, and you can use paint, so you can draw pictures. Everything else comes down to your business application. Some of the most popular ones are Microsoft Office. Everyone is familiar with Word, Excel, <coughs> Outlook. Some people use PowerPoint, Case in Point, and Microsoft Access. Those are also very popular. Some people choose the road less taken, so to speak, called OpenOffice, a free Java-based solution that does many of the functions Microsoft Office does, then some of the larger corporate entities you will still see use Lotus Notes, which is more of a quasi-enterprise level option. Then when you get larger, you will need some sort of enterprise application. This is when we really get into the hard-hitting stuff where, okay, you need a data center, you need five servers. This is when you have multiple locations and um, you need to handle a lot of data in a lot of very specific ways. So these break, break down into ERP, EMR, CRM. CRM is the one you would probably deal with first. Customer Relationship Management. This is something you need to begin with. A lot of people put this off, and I don't care what you use. You use Salesforce, great. If you keep this data in Excel, fine. Just keep it somehow, and don't leave it being just a stack of business cards. The more defined your data is, the easier it is to work with, the more efficient <coughs> you will be, the more sales you will make. So underneath of each, you'll see the basic requirements. It's an operating system, you need a computer, buy one from Dell, no big deal. Business applications, you're going to want a network, you're going to want these computers talking to each other. If everybody is on their own separate computers without a network, you can't send email to everyone. Useless. And then once you get to some of the bigger boys, you need separate domains and servers and everything else. But generally speaking with this audience, your enterprise applications will probably come in a couple of years or if you can get funding a little sooner. Now on to the cloud. Cloud is an intangible for all it really matters. It's zero, it's null, you know, it's infinity. It is, at the essence, outsourcing. Just when something is in the cloud it means you physically don't have control over it. Someone else does it for you. When you buy a telephone line from Verizon, you're outsourcing your dial tone service to Verizon. There's a machine somewhere, someplace else that handles the work well for you. 
backup, same way. You don't have a backup device in your office. It's in someone else's office. It's someone else's data center. Remote computing, you don't own the server. It's someplace else. It still exists. And endless possibilities. The cloud, more and more things are becoming internet aware. Phone applications are really starting to go viral. You're going to see more and more use of internet and internet activities. Return on investment. This is the most important thing to think about when running and operating your own business. First and foremost is don't lose focus. Sometimes you can't see the trees because of the forest. Always bad to get into that kind of thing. You need to build your business. You need to sell your business. You need to market your business. That is the most important thing. Everything else can kind of fall into place if you market your business well. Do it right the first time. If you know you're going to, if you know you're going to hire 10 more people this year, you know you're going to expand out, you know you're going to have a sales team, do not start with an Excel document. It's going to take time and money to convert it over. If you know you're going to need something in six months or a year that's going to be heavy duty, start with the proper thing first. If you know you're going to have 100 employees, don't buy a Linksys router to begin with. Opt for a Cisco. It will save you time going forward and it will prevent downtime. Downtime is loss of revenue. Outsourcing services, should probably flip those. Outsourcing services is generally a good idea. I'm not saying outsource manufacturing to India or what have you, I'm saying outsource professional services. You're not gonna hire an internal IT guy necessarily, so you use someone like me. You're not gonna hire an internal phone guy, you would use someone like Don. You're not gonna hire a web developer in-house necessarily, you would use someone like Dan. You aren't going to hire your own VC company in-house unless you have a lot of money and then I'm sure Kevin would still happily help you out. <laughs> Same thing with legal, accounting, you name it. You're gonna outsource your professional services, don't take on too much on your own. If you can outsource the stuff and spend the time marketing, you will do better on returns. Next, never, ever, ever pay for a professional quote. If someone says, yes, I'm happy to sit down with you for an hour, but I'm going to bill you. It's a loser, don't do it. Quotes should always be free. And that's about it for this. We'll take the questions at the end. And I'm going to turn this over to